Fish and Wildlife filed just with the Forest Service. We've got a Palmer Ranger District. Um, this, most of this two cannon drainage, all the way over to Soton, over to Bluewood, and down into Oregon is the area that I work in. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about today is a little bit of turkey habitat, um, turkey meat, um, what we have available, what we live, live off of around here. Um, a little bit of their life cycle and just some general wild items about turkeys. You guys got any questions so far? So you guys heard, heard some of the um, National Wild Turkey Federation guys talk about how the uh, turkey population was pretty depressed back in the early 1900s. Um, the turkey population got all the way down to 30,000 birds back in the so it was not hardly any birds across the United States. Nowadays, there's over 7 million birds that we can A lot of that has to do with um, groups like the National Wild Turkey Federation, um, state wildlife agencies, other, other agencies, Forest Service, um, other land management agencies working together um, with hunters and themselves to do habitat restoration projects. So there's the, this act that was passed quite a few years back, um, the Pittman-Robertson Act, all the way back to 1937. So every time somebody buys sporting goods, ammunition, guns, anything um, sporting goods related, a portion of the, there's a tax on that, so a portion of that money comes back to the conservation fund for habitat improvements. Um, so that's kind of where we get a lot of money to go do a lot of our restoration work. Uh, can anybody tell me the uh, different species of turkeys that we have in the United States? Um, Mary, 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 and Eastern. Okay, that's three of them. Can you think of any others? That's three of them that we have here in Washington. We talked about that one in Florida, Osceola. Yep, there's one down in Osceola. It's last down in like the Florida Panhandle. It's the only place you got to find that bird. And then there's the Goulds. So Goulds can be like the southern areas of New Mexico and Arizona. And it goes all the way down into Mexico, the country, the country of Mexico. So that's, that's kind of the five that we have in the United States. And the answer to what we have here in uh, Washington. Um, how many feathers does a turkey have? Do you have any ideas? How many feathers the bird has, or how many types of feathers? No, how, how many feathers? Ever oh, that's that's Ten thousand? Uh, 
So what are some of the um, feathers? You know, they have different different turkeys have different colored feathers, right? So the different species will have a little bit different colored feathers. So what are some of those colors and feathers that they have? A little bit of blue, bluish tinge to them. Black, brown, gray, white. Yeah. We're also, they've got a, what they call iridescence. Does anybody know what iridescence is? It's where their colors like kind of change in the sunlight. Right. So in the shade, the turkey looks one color. But when sunlight comes down, you know, you'll start to see these coppers or these greens reflect off the turkey and different things like that. So. That's also part of the display. You know, they're out there all puffed up. The bigger they make themselves, the more likely that the sunlight's going to reflect off of them. So it makes them look big and tough, blood, to anybody who wants to come in and fight them. But it also makes them, in that sense, it makes them look nice and shiny and pretty and all the hands. So what are some difference, differences between the hens and the toms? Uh, toms have spurs. And Okay. Uh, that they have different kinds of feathers. Uh, they have a little bit different kinds of feathers. Did you guess? Um, toms have beards and hens can only go. Yeah, toms have beards and hens can only go. So up to 10, 10 to 20 percent of the hens in a population can have a beard. It's just a genetic normality or defect or whatever. Um, so, like the officers told you guys earlier today, it's a legal bird to shoot. As long as it's a bearded bird, it doesn't have to be a tom, it just has to be a bearded turkey. So, the spurs, does anybody know how, how big the spurs get? Get a few inches long. It's a big spur. You may know what they're used for. Yeah, they're fighting. So they're going to fight with other toms for to see who's the boss. So, how fast can a turkey run? Does anybody know that? 30 miles per hour. No, 25, 30 miles an hour. It's pretty fast. How fast can they fly? <laughs> 55 miles an hour. So they can haul some tail. <laughs> when they're about to fly, when something is after them, they'll explode. I mean, you know, they'll take off running to get some distance first, and, they, and they'll fly. I mean, they're not necessarily flapping the whole time, but they're hit that. They, they'll flap, get up to speed, and then they'll start gliding and start a little bit of energy. They're, the main goal is just to get some distance between whatever's after them. So, See one flying, you're gonna try to shoot it on the wing. <laughs> Just to let you know they fly fast. 50 miles an hour, you're gonna have to lead it a long ways. So, eggs, hens lay eggs, right? They make how many eggs in the land? 4 to 17 eggs. Yeah, every four from 10 to 12 eggs. What a net turkey nest looks like? Um, yeah, the way it's fine. It's usually what it is, it's a brown nest. They go from nest on the ground. Um, it's kind of a depression. It's, you guys know the size of a turkey, so they build a little bit bigger nest. And they'll lay those 10 or 12 eggs in there. And every once in a while, she'll rotate them around. She'll, she'll lay one egg a day. So over that 10 days or 12 days that she's laying the eggs, she won't sit on them to incubate them. She'll wait until after she's laid all of her eggs before she sits on them and incubates them. Does so anybody know why that would be? Because they hatch at the same time. Yeah, so they hatch at the same time. Why do they have ground in the nest, but they roost up in the trees? Aren't they like another like hawk or something that makes okay. them Because when the so, like other birds, hawks and um, bluebirds or anything like that, the adults actually bring the food back to the nest. 
for um, their young because when they're hatched, they're not feathered out. They've got these little downy feathers to keep them warm. Now when turkeys hatch this out, they've got little pin feathers, things like that. With the 24 hours, they're already up running around with mom feeding on themselves. Mom doesn't bring them food. She'll take them out through the forest or through the meadows, you know, saying, here's the grass, talk about this is a little, this is, you know, she's teaching them what they can and cannot eat. Mm. So, and that's, so like your quail and your pheasant, all those game birds build a nest on the ground and they, they, they're up and they're out moving around with mom, forging up with mom. And mom is playing with them. So, talked about how, you know, within 12, 24 hours they're, they're off running around with mom. So, what, what do they eat? What are turkeys eat? Berries. Berries. Bugs. All kinds of bugs. Um, some grasses and stuff. Some grasses. Small bugs. Small lizards and snakes, small reptiles, uh, all kinds of all kinds of insects, grasshoppers, beetles, um, snails. flies, snails, snails. snails. Yep. Yeah. They'll eat acorns, pine nuts, juniper berries. Juniper berries. Yep. So yeah, I think in one of your old guides here, there's all kind of talks about turkeys. Talks about some of their foods and things like that. Acorns. Yeah. We don't have we don't have too many of those things around here. <laughs> it, usually, usually around here, what they're, they're, they're going to mainly focus on, they're going to focus on a lot of a lot of insects, a lot of old grains, grasses, and grass seeds. Um, we have plenty of reptiles around here. They'll eat snakes and lizards all day long. Um, yeah, where I used to live, um, there was a lot of lizards. They lived in the field. Do they have a gizzard? Yeah. Do they eat gravel like a pheasant? Uh, I haven't witnessed them eating it, but I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it's, many times they're eating grains and things like that. They're, they're going to have something to kind of process that, so they're, sure. it's, they're going to have to eat some kind of grit or gravel or things like that. But I. You know, I don't see them out like the pheasant or the quail that are alongside the roads picking up stuff. I'm guessing that they just pick it up out in the fields where they're in touch with them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, what are these? So, as far as habitat, what is a habitat? So 
what about when they when they pass? So they're and they're out on their own for like. Yeah. Yep. That same list, you know, bobcats, fox, coyotes, raccoons, snakes even. Snakes even. They're big enough. I don't think there's any snakes that big around here, but I know in the Midwest, you got bottle snakes that'll grow six, eight feet long. They found eight foot timber right over at Jim Cannon up by the hatchery ten years ago. Oh, really? Eight foot long. Hmm. Yeah, the biggest one I've ever seen around here is about two feet long. Yeah, I haven't seen very they're, they're pretty rare to get that big. Um, so what about hawks, eagles, owls? You got plenty of great horned owls around here. Great great owls. I've seen a bald eagle this morning. Yep, there's bald eagles up there. There's lots of golden eagles around here. Plenty of red-tailed hawks and uh, harriers. Or the harriers. Aren't golden eagles? city. Yeah. 
Well, because we've got we've been over to the Academy Great. you know, outside of Yakima, yep. and they've got that green dot system over there. Right. And uh, I'd like to see a lot more of that around this area. You know, it would really be really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have we have a motor vehicle use van. They're all they're free. Um, basically, that tells you know, what's open and what's not. You know, I think on my district we've got about four or five hundred miles of roads that you can put your TV on. Mm -hmm. So. Maybe they haven't seen that now. Right, but see, the thing is, it's, it's not as bleak as it make, everybody makes it sound. We shut down 20 miles of road and everybody's up in arms about it. It's a safety issue, so we shut it down. We didn't shut it down to make everybody mad. Okay. Yeah. No, we, we don't want those phone calls. But we also don't want a lawsuit from somebody's um, throwing their kids on an ATV and ride recklessly anyway, and then they have a head on with somebody else who's driving recklessly. Yeah, if, we, if, we knew a, if we knew there was a problem, then we're liable for it, and then somebody sues us. And anytime people see the federal government, the jury just goes, "You got ten million enough?" Yeah. You know, then it's, it's taxpayer dollars where we're trying to figure out where we're going to get ten million dollars. <laughs> exactly. Right. So um, that that's why we usually end up closing things down. Um, it's, a, it's a safety issue, or it could be um, a habitat requirement or need for a lot of species, sure. So, you guys have any questions about anything else? Now, if you have ATVs, there's a north-south trail over on the Pomeroy side. Yeah, I've heard about it, but I haven't been over Yeah, so that basically, you know, there's a campground, a boundary campground, just come up on the mountain road, so I just entered the forest. There's like, a, I think, 15 or 20 miles of ATV trails tied to that campground. Which then ties into the North South Trail, which is like another 15, 20 miles of road. And it parallels the main road that we close ATVs, but then it pops back out on the main road where the traffic s slows down a little bit. And then you get another. What's that campground called? Boundary Campground. Isn't that Upon Able? Upon Able Mountain. Well, yeah, it's at the right angles stuff. It's, it's the forty. It's on the forty road on the forest, and I think they might have some of our kind of motor vehicle use maps. Those come out every year. We print them up every year because we have minor little changes and tweaks and things that we do. So, um, some years we'll have timber sales where we're going to have certain areas closed down to traffic because we don't want people trying to drive in with log trucks sure. down the roads. Um, so. Some years we have them closed, some years we have them open. That's why you print the maps up every year. So, and those maps will only show roads there. Or or if the road is not on that map, it's not going to be on that road. Right. You know, we, that, that makes it idiot proof. <laughs> you thing. Well, yeah, but but we, used, we used to sign a lot of roads, you know, closed motor vehicles. Everybody kept shooting on roads. Signs. <laughs> you know, they, or they, they get their favorite hunt spots so they take the sign and put it on that road. So nobody goes down that road, and they've got the house spots of themselves. Mm. So there's, you know, little games. And now that we've got these maps, we don't have to sign anything. The map says it all. If it's not here. Where are the maps available? You can give at any of the Forest Service offices. Um, I usually try to keep some down here. It's a lot of people are. There's a lot of people that are coming in and out. Um, you can call up the Forest Service office, and they will mail them to you. You can also go online to the forest website and go to the Umatilla National Forest website. And you can actually look at the maps online. You can actually get a printer. You can print out that little mm -hmm. area that you're sure wanting to go to. All right. So, I mean, it makes it nice and easy. But yeah, if you, if you want two or three sets of them, just call up the office and say, can you send me two, two sets of these in this area? And we'll send them to you. Cool. So the, we should have the new ones here, I'm guessing, within the next month. We just got sent into the printers. Hmm. So you're a biologist from this area? Yes. Out of all the animals? Fish, I do fish and wildlife, yeah. Cool. So I yeah, got um, a lot of habitat projects. My main job with the Forest Service would be 
you can do a timber sale or prescribed fire. Um, I analyze those impacts of the projects on, on the wildlife and we try to mitigate it so it doesn't impact the wildlife. Um, so I prescribed fire. Spring burning is not the greatest because you have all the nesting birds, you have deer, all the cows on the ground, not the time you burn, put on fire on the ground because they're not very mobile. So we try to stick to the fall burns. Um, that's one of those mitigation things that we try, try to do. It's better for the wildlife. A lot of times you get drier um, and environments to burn in during the fall because it's after the summer to grow and then it cures off the grasses. So you get some dryer, so you get the fire to carry a little bit better. Sometimes too good. Um, no, they they have they have a requirement. They go out there and if the fuels are too dry, we won't burn because we don't want to have a fire get away from us. We don't want a two thousand acre fire to suddenly become twenty five thousand acres because of the other ways for a and clear over a two cannon fire. Yeah, I mean that's one of you know we had some fire you know where they they burnt late in the spring after a lot of the nesting is all done. And it was going to dry, and you know all of a sudden the day they were right in the temperatures because the same down in the low seventies like they were thinking it was it got up to eighty five ninety degrees like you know the fire just took off. Mm -hmm. We stayed within our our main perimeter, but instead of burning just a few thousand acres that day, we burned you know an extra thousand acres, but we're going to catch it. Uh, and then I work with the state guys, the state fish and wildlife guys, um, doing different habitat projects, work together on uh, elk tracking, um, radio collar and bighorn sheep every year. Um, How does an average Joe get in on something like that? You know, a lot of times it's just calling up the um, state. Um, say, hey, I'm going to say, yeah, say, hey, you know, if, you, if you've got any big motor sheep for the captures plan for the year. But you know, I brought my kid out to, to partake with them. You know, and, I, and that's one thing that I, my daughter was using high school. You know, she, all the high school kids anymore, it seems like they have to have somebody who can service hours. Yeah. So, um, and it just happened to be. Does that, uh, does that something like that go to uh, if Eric guy wanted to take his master's summer? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah there was the hour. Yeah. And so, like, we do the free fishing weekends in the Tucana every year. And it's one of those things that I get um, some of the Silver County Sportsmen to help out. I mean, they're volunteers here because they're volunteering to, to work at those things. And I sign up for that. Yeah. So, yeah, any of those, any of those type projects, it's um, a lot of times just making that contact with the biologist. So, with the big horse sheep capture, it's usually a yearly thing. We do it every year. Um, some years we have a lot of volunteers. Other years we're scrambling for volunteers. And we really have too many volunteers or a few people are standing around just observing thing. And it's been years when there's been eight of us and we've got three big ones and there's usually three or four people on one at a time taking all their files and helping the vets, giving them shots and takes specimens and yeah, it's it pretty hectic there for a few hours as <laughs> you're running around. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, if you guys, I would encourage, yeah, if you guys are interested. He wants to be bad at your job one of these days. How many guys have <laughs> it's How many years, years of college? It's four years of college. Four years? Yeah, I just got, I just got a bachelor's degree in promotion to state, wildlife management. But you know, right out of high school, there's all kinds of jobs in the Forest Service in the state. For seasonal work. Yeah, there's some of them right now. Yeah. I, I would encourage. Is that how you got into the door pretty much then? No, I was actually in the, I was in the Navy for, for about five years before this book. We got out and then got to, um, you know, I originally wanted to get a game board. So I went to the game board and said, What do I need to do? He said, Well, you distinguish yourself from everybody else that's unemployed at the time looking for a job. Because usually everybody has these. Game words. I want to be a game word. So everybody's going to take the game word test. Well, we need something else to back that up. I've got a wildlife degree, or I've got a fisheries degree to show, to separate yourself from some of the sure. other people. So that's, that was the recommendation for my 
gave away that looked a mile away from me. To go to school, get a wildlife management career, get a fisheries degree, and that would distinguish yourself from 80% of the people taking the test. And you know, you volunteer, work with people, and so you, they know who you are. Um, that way, you get letters of recommendation when you decide to apply for these type of jobs. <laughs> It's not all about education. A lot of it's who you know, who the contacts you have. That's, you know, I went to school with a bunch of kids in college, so that group is also not all. They were working in their field and then they struggled once they got out of college to find a job because they didn't have actual experience. Does the pay pretty good? It's good. Yeah. Good benefits? Yeah. I mean, my job is a federal job. So I mean, good, good health benefits, um, good retirement. So I, and I get, to out, I get to go out the field with that. Yeah, yeah, you get to go. Your yeah. job is here, right? They're ready for them. Are they ready for them? Oh. Yeah, it's coming. I'm wondering if all the other people came to show up. No, yeah, nobody came yet. We've been like, oh, we've been showing up. 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 Oh,